Hello, let's get started with graphing some piecewise functions. Let's take a look at the following example. Okay, I want to graph f of x equals, and then the piecewise function is defined as x squared when x is less than or equal to 1, and the line 3 minus x when x is greater than 1. Before trying to do any of these, you need to know how to graph x squared and 3 minus x on its own before doing the piecewise function. So let's go ahead and graph x squared just to see what it looks like. Okay, down here I graphed x squared. I did it with a dotted line and I labeled it y equals x squared. Let's go ahead and graph 3 minus x. And again, I did this with a dotted line. If you're not sure how to graph 3 minus x, what you can do is plot some points. You know that it's a straight line. So for example, when x is 0, you got the point uh, 0, 3. When x is 1, you got y equals 2. And when x is 3, you got 3 minus 3, which is 0. So you can connect these three dots and you get this line. Now that we know how to graph each graph on its own, let's go ahead and graph the piecewise function. The trick is knowing where you're supposed to look like x squared. Again, my function f has to look like x squared, but only when x is less than or equal to 1. So let's go ahead and find out where when x equals 1. So we'll go ahead, when x is 1, you get 1 squared, so we're right here. Notice that it is a um, less than or equal to, which means it's a closed dot. Let's go ahead and put a closed dot there. And my graph is going to look like x squared as long as I'm less than or equal to 1. So all of this right here. OK, so I darkened in the side that I want, and then I left the uh, dotted side, the area that I don't want. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just go over here and erase the part I don't want. OK, let's move on to the 3 minus x. So I want it to be when x is greater than 1. So here's x is greater than 1, or here's when x equals 1, sorry. I regraphed it because I wanted to get rid of those points. So here's x equals 1. You can use this as a reference point. So even though that I don't get to include 1, when x is 1, I would have expected it to be 2. And so what I do is I just put an open dot. And then I'm supposed to look like this line when x is greater than 1. So I would just darken in this side right here, and I would just keep going. So I've darkened in the region that I want. I'm going to go ahead and erase the pieces I don't want, which would be over here. Now this is what each graph looks like on its restricted domain. So again, x squared when x is less than or equal to 1, and 3 minus x when x is greater than 1. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to lay these graphs right on top of each other. Now there's the final answer. What would make this go a lot faster is being able to graph x squared on the restricted domain all on one graph instead of doing them separately and putting them together. So let's go ahead and try one more. Our next example is to graph f of x, which is defined to be the following three pieces. The square root of x plus 2, when x is less than or equal to negative 1. The absolute value of x, when x is between negative 1 and 1. And finally, x e or uh, y equals 4 when x is greater than or equal to 1. So let's pull out a graph. OK, let's start with graphing the square root of x plus 2. Uh, so you know what it looks like. The square root of x plus 2 is going to look something like this. We just need to know where to place it. Uh, what it is is it's the square root of x, uh, but shift it to the left two times. So we're going to be starting right here. And then you, you know that it's going to look something like this. You just need to plot some points. So when x is negative 1, you get the square root of 1, which is here, and, and so on. So you would look something like this. But notice that it's restricted to be x is greater or less than or equal to negative 1. So we got to go back here and only go when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So all of this dotted line right here, I have to erase. And so now I'm just going to connect these two dots kind of like a square root, well, exactly like a square root. Uh, so that's that piece right there. Now the absolute value of x looks like the v, 
Now, starting at negative 1, again, I don't get to include it, but I can use it as a reference point. So if I plug in negative 1, I would get 1, which would put me right here. But notice that it's already full, or the dot's already been filled by the other graph. Uh, so I'll fix that in a second. Uh, but then it's going to look like the V, so it's going to go down to 0, and then to the origin, and then go back up. And when x is equal to 1, again, we don't have that, we don't get to include it. So we got to do another open dot. And finally, we're going to graph 4. Now, this is y equals 4. This is a horizontal line when x is greater than or equal to 1. So when x is 1, we get 4. And so I would plot that point right there. But again, it's x is not just equal to 1, but greater than or equal to 1. So that's why we get to go that way forever. And this is my piecewise function. Let me graph uh, what it looks like if I were to do it on a calculator so you can see how, how accurate this actually is. So let's paste it. So here is what the graph would look like if it was done on a nice calculator. Uh, you can see that we are pretty accurate with uh, what it's supposed to look like. So there's the square root piece, the absolute value. Uh, notice the open dot here. And there's y equals 4.